Have you ever heard of a two-seat, 10,000 horsepower top fuel dragster? Well, you're just about ready to find out. I'm with Larry Dixon this weekend, and we're down in Memphis, Tennessee. We're scheduled to give five rides this weekend, one on Friday and four on Saturday. The weather around Memphis has been kind of iffy. It's rained a lot, and it's made conditions here a little rough on the track. We're going to do the best we can with what we got to work with. Now, I want to show you what happens every time that we travel with this car. We take all the body panels off. And generally, I personally inspect every weld on this car. Right here, I'm taking a can of brake clean, and I'm spraying every weld watching to see if there's any kind of cracking going on. I do both sides of the car, then I come back, and I come back with an anti-rust agent that I spray back all over the whole frame rail, and then we'll assemble that body back on this thing. You know, it's not like this thing doesn't get checked out at the shop, but in the travel, you never know what's gonna happen. So we always, always inspect our chassis the first day when we show up at a racetrack. So they finish assembling the car, and in the meantime, I'm going to take a look at the weather. Now, based on the temperature, the barometer, humidity, the amount of grains, and the performance altimeter, I'll make decisions on what gaskets that we're going to put on this thing. So what I'm talking about are the head gaskets. We change these things in thousands increments to get the right compression that we want. We will also use the blower overdrive as another tuning feature. You have to predict what the weather's going to be when you're going to run the car. So say in this situation, it takes us an hour or so to put it together and get everything rolling. We need to predict what time we're going to be on the track and what the weather's going to be at the time we're going to run it. Every ride in this car is like going to your final at a national event. Everything has to be perfect. We'll adjust the valves, slap some valve covers on this thing, and we'll get this thing fired up. During the warm-up, Larry likes to seat the clutch and give that extra experience to his rider. We also cycle the system and go through all the different components that operate the clutch, the timing, and we'll recheck all that stuff on the computer. The team then, they'll check the clutch setting, they'll go back and double check everything on the car and put this thing down, and then we'll stick as a rider in this thing. Our first rider is Joe Hollis. You ready to rip? Let's burn some nitro. <laughs> All right. So now Joe's ready to roll. So we'll roll this thing out of the pit and tow her up to the start line. See what we got. You good? You good? Yeah. We have less motor because you got hotter trap, right? Yeah. yeah. It's all right. All yep. Should be all. It should be perfect. All right, have fun. Forget, the burnout's the funnest part. After the burnout, back up, we'll make those idle adjustments and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I'll make sure your visor's down. I'll yes. ask, you know, double check. Now I give you, you give me the okay sign, everything's good. Okay. All right, shoot out there. As much as you prepare one of these cars, for an experience that people have put a lot of money down to happen, it, it still makes you so nervous because these things sometimes have a mind of their own. Now, this is what we're dealing with here. The track conditions here are not ideal. We've got a lot of peeling behind the starting line here. And you have to remember, this car is four foot longer than any car out there. It kind of sets in no man's land. That's where cars don't run or don't start out at. The rain that they've had around here has been making the rubber not adhere to the asphalt. So we're doing our very best to work with what we got. 
So I'm pulling Larry up to where I want him to do the burnout. I want to be on those burnout tracks so we have some fresh rubber to roll on. You know, each run in this car is like final eliminations every time. If you don't get a little butterflies in your stomach, then you're probably doing something wrong. Somebody gonna grab this from me? What's that? Grab I'll this from me when, no, I can grab, I can, whatever, I can pass it to you or whatever. Uh, 10-4. All right, I'm gonna spin it, Larry. Okay, clear. So after clearing the motor, old Chris here, he hooks up the blower luber. And I'll go up to Larry and ask him if he's ready to roll. Ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Got the switch deal. It's all yep. good. I'm good. Yep. All right. Okay. We got the same started. I immediately noticed that we had a little smoke coming out of number seven. Very unusual. Sometimes it clears up in the burn up, sometimes it doesn't. The burnout lands pretty close to where I want. You know, there's a very fine line here within six inches or so where I needed to put this thing, but it actually looks pretty decent. As a crew chief, that's nothing but disappointment right there. This thing needs eight cylinders to make everything right, not out. seven. Yep, number seven. Seven had a bunch of oil pumping. Yep. You see that? A lot of oil. As hard as you try sometimes, nitromethane can make you look real stupid. You know, you're trying to burn 60 gallons a minute at the step of the gas. You can look down here on the track. Look at this tire hopping. It's catching, spinning, catching, spinning. We call that tire shake. The power has to be there to get through the clutch. As a rider, that is irreplaceable. <laughs> to get to ride with Larry Dixon on yeah. a pedal job, yeah. who else can say they've ever done that? Yeah, you know not I mean? Yeah, not I mean, it's sideways out there. Yeah. I get it, but it's not what's... Yeah, pulled out at seven. Could, and something was wrong because I couldn't get the idle up. That's 2,500 and I had everything out. <sighs> Cock balls. Well, that was the shake. Guys, I felt it. There's no words for this. Really? Yeah, there, there's nothing to describe it. Well, that wasn't the best ride, but that's the wildest ride. Well, the motor's still together. Oh, yeah. Something happened to number seven, man. It's on seven cylinders. 
Is that what caused it? Yeah. So we're gonna figure it out and get this puppy back together. Oh, I'm ready to go again. He's not, he, I told him, you're not gonna get an argument from me about going again. <laughs> so the team's doing their best to get this thing turned around as fast as we can. We definitely got some weather coming in. We also have some issues. Broke a rock arm where? Who? Yeah, right there. You got the top, right? Yes, it's right here, still on the track. Okay, gotcha. Pedaling one of these cars to make it down the track is very damaging sometimes. So we're just gonna give it a whirl tomorrow. All right, gentlemen, ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. Today's problem is the track looks like crap because of all the rain we had last night. It's a crapshoot, but... All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Starting line kind of looks worse than what I thought. Also, when Larry did the burnout, the car drifted to the left. So we're going to have to try and straddle these tracks and get him in the track when he gets back. by the front wheels you can see how crooked the burnout was and how far the car is not in line with the burnout. right off the track. When a motor freewheels like that from spinning the tires, it's really hard on the valve train. You can look here, it broke a retainer on the intake. We're lucky it just didn't blow the whole motor up. We're gonna give these riders another chance. We're gonna go to a track that we know we're gonna have good conditions, that they're gonna get a full pull, and they're gonna get their money's worth. This is a tough job. It's a tough ownership to have one of these things. There's not another one in the world like this. And there are no books out there telling you how to tune a two-seat top fuel dragster. So everyone was in agreement to do it at a later time. So just cut our losses and head home. You know, they always say there's light at the end of the rainbow. And hopefully this was a good sign for us on our next outing. We landed back here in Indy, you know, with our tails between our legs. Kind of got ourselves beat up a little bit by this track, but... I guarantee you this, we'll be back out there and these guys are gonna have the ride of their lives and I'll be glad to help them do that.